Hey everybody, welcome back to the Crochet Crowd as well as my friends over at Joanne.com. Today is week number one of the mystery. Today I'm going to kick you off. We're going to get started, but let me tell you a little bit more and then we're going to dive right into the studio and get you on your way. So a couple weeks ago I told you that you're going to need Bernat Blanket Yarn. That is our yarn of choice. You know what, it's it really quite a fabulous time right here on the Crochet Crowd as well as Joanne.com. Don't forget that we have an events page and you can share your work in progress or any questions that you may have. I'm going to be snooping around there, you got people from Joanne there, but you also have stitchers just like you also participating and our knitter friends are also using the same page so you can see what they're up to at the very same time. When using Instagram or any social platforms and you're sharing any photos of your work in progress or anything, please don't forget to use our hashtag of handmade with Joanne as well as the crochet crowd. We'd love to be tagged so that we can keep an eye on your progress and see what you have in mind for your color combinations. Without further ado, let me tell you a little bit more about what's going to happen in today's tutorial and then I'm going to kick you off and we're going to head on to the studio and get started. So today is all about getting started. I think you're going to have a great time. So this is going to be kind of like the setup for the rest of the week. So each time you get a different week, there will be a different set of pages to be able to add to your pattern. So maybe grab a little binder and then keep adding those to it. So we're going to do a quick pattern review to make sure that you understand what we're up to. We're also going to be doing a swatch. Now the test swatch is to make sure that your hook matches the particular project so that when you get to a certain size, it's not going to start buckling on you. We're going to do a test swatch together and then we're going to start and do the mystery. The fabulous thing about this one is at the end of this clue, we're going to do some surface crochet. Not sure what that is? Don't worry about it. We'll get to it when we get to it. So without further ado, let's head on into the studio because now it's time to get going. This video has sound alerts added. When you hear this sound, it will be your signal that the segment is finishing up. Press stop and crochet the instructions and then press play again to continue along in your project. So let's begin week number one. So we're going to get started today and there's a few things that we need to do before we get started. We're going to do a quick review of this pattern and we're also going to do a gauge check in order to make sure that you are going to get off to the right start. So today we're going to look at this pattern and it also comes with the crochet diagram that is on page number two and you can follow that as well and then you're going to put that aside and then wait for week number two in order to begin. So first thing that we need to do is let's take a quick look at the pattern and decipher it a little bit and then we'll do a gauge check. So right off the hop we're going to see our colors that we're going to be using today and we have uh, four colors for this entire project that we're going to be using and you can see that the ball counts are here as we go. It's also recommending a size L and 8 millimeter crochet hook but it says or size needed to obtain gauge. That is so important for you because if your gauge is different from what the designer was then it will not sit flat and I'll show you how to check your gauge in order to get off to the right start. So within today's pattern you're going to notice that all these abbreviations are used inside and as we go through it, the pattern you're going to notice that as we run across them but don't let that uh, really uh, stop you from really being successful because we're going to go step by step in today's tutorial. So on the next page what we have is that we have a crochet diagram that is here. So for those that like to follow a crochet diagram instead of writing all the or instead of reading all the words you can do that right here and just follow along and then use the words as a backup method in order to go. So you can see that we're going to go through all the way to round number seven before we stop and then end up on the second week for this mystery crochet along. So I want to direct your attention to the gauge. Now the gauge is the amount of stitches in the row and the amount of rows in the height in order to equal a four inch by four inch swatch. So what we need to do is that we need to do a test swatch in order to determine whether the eight millimeter size L is right for you or not. And if it doesn't work out to the be the four inches then we know that we have to adjust our hook one way or another for changing the size when keeping our yarn in balance with uh, this particular project. So what we're going to do is that I'm going to show you how to make a gauge based on these information here and then let's get started. So we're not going to waste any yarn so just grab your Bernat blanket yarn and then grab the size eight millimeter size L crochet hook in order to begin. So let's begin working on a gauge swatch and this is really quite quick and easy. Do not cut this yarn after you're done. We're going to pull it apart and then use it in the project so it's not like it's wasted yarn. We're going to start off with a slip knot to begin and it says that the gauge watch was seven single crochets by eight rows. So what we can do for the swatch because it says seven single crochets we're going to chain a total of eight. So one, two, three, 
four, five, six, seven, and eight. So what we need to do is that we need to go second chain from the hook. So count back one and two. Just to turn it around and get the back uh, loop of that chain of that second one over and just single crochet into that one and keep single crocheting across your chain in the back loop of the chain as you go. And so when you did the uh, eight chains when you went second chain from the hook this should equal seven single crochets as you make your way all the way back. So please just single crochet all the way to the other side. It's just gonna take you a moment and then we're going to then continue up to do the rows in order to measure the gauge. So this is gonna be counted as row number one by the time you get to the other side. And I'm there in just a moment. Might as well just keep the camera going. And we're gonna go into that last one and then turn our work. So what we're gonna do is this is row number one. So on a spare piece of paper and you can write on the pattern if you want. Just uh, check off that you did row number one and I'm gonna do that here off camera. And I'm gonna turn my work and begin the next row. So to begin the next row chain one and then starting right in the first one is that you're going to single crochet in that one plus all of its friends in the row. So just single crochet all the way down and this will be row number two. So what I want you to do is that I want you to do a total of eight rows all together and then meet me back here in just a moment and then we'll do an analysis with the tape measure to see how we're doing. So now back I just was a few moments ago and then I just completed my swatch. So there's eight rows of single crochet here and now I'm gonna take a measurement. I've already done it off camera just to make sure I got it right too. But I've already done a sample off camera as well before even doing this to make sure that my tension was correct. So all you're just gonna do is you're gonna take a tape measure and you're gonna lay it down and you can see that it's four inches. So that we know that the seven single crochets across with equals four inches and then we're just gonna measure in the height and we also see that it's four inches and so that we know that this gauge is right. So what happens if this swatch was too small? So say you were at uh, about just under three and, a half, three and a half to three. It means that you're tight and then all you just need to do is increase your hook size. So maybe even go up to a 10 millimeter uh, size N as in Nancy crochet hook in order to retry again and then just pull this apart and retry. Now if your sample is way too big like maybe four and a half or five then what I would do is take your crochet hook and reduce down to a smaller uh, gauge maybe a seven millimeter or in between a J or a K and the L just like so. So like a seven millimeter if you need to. So just that be relaxed. Remember that your gauge is dependent on your mood swings as well. So it will change and uh, just make sure that you're relaxed when you're going to work on this particular project. And of course crochet makes you relaxed as well. So now that we know our tension's good we're just gonna take this project now and we're just gonna undo it and then put it back in the ball so we don't waste any more yarn. So let's uh, take a look at the diagram and let's get started on the first round. So in the beginning I mentioned that there's a diagram on page number two. Each one of the clues will have a diagram for us to be able to follow plus you have the written words for confirmation for those that expect it and then also for those that just are, are visual you can follow along with me on camera as well and then we're gonna get it done. But I'm gonna refer to the diagram element here. It's the easiest way to show what's exactly happening. So let's zoom in on this and let's take a look what we're seeing in the diagram because I think you'll find that quite helpful. So in each one of the clues you're gonna have a diagram uh, that's available to you and it's basically a road map of everything that you need to look at. So regardless if you're left or right handed we're always going to start and we're going to go into a counterclock wise as we go around. So we start off in the very middle just like you so see here. So how many chains do you have to start off in the middle? You can just count those out one, two, three, four, five, and six. If you're not sure you can go back to the directions at the top and it says to chain six. So it's actually kind of a neat idea. This is called a stitch key. Everything that is in this diagram is mentioned here and of course you can just use your information uh, as far as like there's if there's something really special it'll be in the actual uh, clue abbreviations as well. So you're going to notice that this is really quite an easy thing. So even though the stitches appear upside down here just to visualize it like a record and as you turn the project it's like a steering wheel and everything just always stays in the top as you go all the way around. So don't worry about the orientation of these stitches it never changes. So we're gonna get all the way back to the beginning just like so and then we're going to then just continue to work our way up into round number seven. So I'm gonna bring you back to this diagram in between 
each one of the steps to make sure you know what you're doing. But first let's grab our eight millimeter size L crochet hook or, or whatever one that you used for your gauge that you determined and we're gonna start row now round number one together. So let's begin. So let's begin. I'm going to use my vintage white. It looks really amazing with this color. I normally would not do white on a white background but it's totally worth it. So just bear with me as we get started today. So we're going to start off by chaining six. It said that in there but it's also in the diagram. So let's just rotate our hook and pull through as it chains. So one, two, three, four, five and six and insert our hook into the beginning chain and then yarn over and pull through and you will have an open uh, center piece just like you see here. And this tail here you're just gonna wanna wrap it around like it's part of it in order to get lost within the stitch work. Let's so let's begin round number one. So in round number one we're going to chain three. So one, two and three and this counts as a double crochet and it's so important that you know that because you don't wanna put any extra stitches in at this point. So you wanna come back into the center of the ring and you wanna double crochet. So keep this straggler down on top of the ring so it gets stuck in into position and double crochet right into the center of the ring. Just like that. So we're going to continue around the center. We're gonna chain one first and then come back into the center of the ring and we're gonna double crochet two more times now once and this is like the very beginning. The chain three counted as a double crochet and then we double crochet to giving you two in a row and this now is two double crochets in a row if you look at it from that perspective. So chain one and then double crochet into the uh, ring again twice. And then chain one and then double crochet again twice. Just like you see here and then chain one and double crochet again twice. Just like you see here and then chain one and you wanna double crochet. If you're running out of space again do a double crochet twice but if you're running out of space just move the stitches around because you're only uh, playing in the ring and then chain one and then you're gonna wanna count the number of, of two double crochets that are together. So, so we're gonna count these together. So one, two, three, four, five, six. These are the pairs together. We need to get a total of seven. So just shift around this uh, center spot in order to make room and you want to double crochet again two more times. So that will give you seven pairs. You want a total of eight pairs and then chain one and then again back in to the center two more times just like you see here and then chain one and then you're going to want to slip stitch it to the top of the first chain three and then what I'm gonna do is that we just slip stitch to the top of the center uh, of the chain three and then all I'm just gonna do is that I'm just gonna just pull things around on the center here to bring it in balance and I'm also gonna get rid of the straggler that's right in the beginning as well. So we're now back on the diagram and we just finished off round number one. So in round number two what we're going to do and I'm just gonna circle that make sure I, I did it and then I'm going to move up to round number two. So round number two see where we're going to start? We're gonna start in the first chain one space instead. So we're gonna have to slip stitch over in order to get there. Chain up three which counts as a double crochet. Put two more double crochets into this chain one space. Chain two and then three double crochets into the next chain one space, two chains here and then three more double crochets into the next chain one space. And we're gonna continue to do that all the way around. So let's begin round number two. So as mentioned we have to go to the first chain one space right where I'm pinching and rubbing right here. So in order to get there we have to slip stitch. So we're already slip stitched into the top of the first chain three and we're going to move over one by slip stitching into the next double crochet and then we're gonna slip stitch next one into the chain one space to begin. So now we're going to start. So chain up three, one, two, three and that counts as a double crochet and you wanna double crochet two more times into that same chain one space. And then you're going to chain two. And we come to the next chain one space that you're gonna run into right here and then you're gonna put three double crochets into that one. And that's gonna be the repeat pattern all the way around for this round. Okay, so let's just recap one more time. So you're gonna chain two 
and then move to the next chain one space and put in three double crochets into the next space. Please do that all the way around. I'll meet you at the end of this round and then we'll finish up this round together. So let's finish off round number two together. So you just got the three double crochets here in the last chain one space and to finish off you have to chain two first and then slip stitch it to the top of the beginning chain three. So I'm going to deviate a little bit from the pattern here. I'm allowed to do that and what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna fasten off completely here because we're gonna change colors but if you prefer not to change colors this way then just follow the instructions in order to do it the way that the designer is saying. So either way you'll end up with the same result. This is my own personal preference. So cut your yarn and then just pull it through like so and then I want you to weave in these ends and I want you to go around these pole, uh, posts and I want you to go in and out of these stitches to trap that into position and you can also use a darning needle if you wish if you don't want it to fall out. So as you continue then just to weave in your ends just leave out the loose end out of the back side and then we'll get rid of that later when we know it's insecure. So what you're gonna have now is that in the end of row number two you should have eight groups of three with chain two spaces. So let's uh, pull up the diagram and let's go on to round number three. So in round number three you're gonna notice that there has slip stitching over so if you wanted to carry that color and then change it later you can but what I'd like to do is that I like to start fresh with the new color right into the first chain to two space right here. So we're gonna uh, fasten on right in the chain two space with the new color chain up three which counts as a double crochet and then double crochet back in chain two and then two double crochets back into that chain two space and then we're just gonna immediately come into the next chain two space and do the same thing. So two double crochets, chain two, two double crochets and we're gonna continue that all the way around. Do not worry about this um, extended single crochet coming all the way down. We don't have to worry about that for a few more rounds. So without, uh, without further ado let's begin round number three. So let's begin round number three. I'm going to start off with the slip knot so it's just extra security for myself and put it onto the hook. So you can choose any chain two space if you're gonna do it the way I'm showing you. If you're not gonna, if you're gonna do it the way that the pattern suggests then you gotta start where it shows you. So I'm just gonna go into any chain two space here and I'm just going to fasten on the yarn so I'm just gonna wrap it around and pull through like a slip stitch and I'm gonna leave down this straggler down on top of the chain two space. So we're going to chain two or chain three. So one, two and three and I want you to double crochet again and what I want you to do is keep this straggler down on top of the line so that you can get it stuck underneath. So now the chain three and the first double crochet counts as two double crochet. Then you're gonna chain two and then two double crochets back into that same chain two space. See how you're bearing in this, this other uh, yarn strand as you go? It just is easy way to do that instead of having to worry about it later. So you have two double crochet, two chain, two double crochet. So move to the next chain two space and do the same thing. So two double crochet, chain two and two double crochet. So I want you to do that in every chain space going all the way around and I'll see you at the end of this round for round number three. As you come around on round number three you're gonna come to the end like so. So you had two double crochet, chain two, two double crochet. You're just gonna immediately just slip stitch into the top of the first chain three and keep this yarn color going and you're going to notice it's gonna bowl up a little bit. Don't worry about it. It will flatten down in the next few rounds. So let's begin round number four. Let's go back to the diagram. So back to the diagram we go. We're going up to round number four. So right now we're just at the top of the first chain three. So we're gonna have to slip stitch our way to this chain two space here and then we're going to put in three uh, chains here which counts as a double crochet and then we're gonna double crochet one, two, three, four, five and six. So this counts as seven double crochets if you include that chain three as a double crochet. Then immediately you're going to jump to the next chain two space right here and then put another seven. Jump to the next chain two space and then another seven. Let's do that for round number three or uh, four. So let's begin round number four. So we're at the top of the first chain three that we had started with. So we're gonna slip stitch into the first double crochet that we're gonna run into which is the next one and then we're gonna slip stitch right into the chain two space which is the next one. So we're gonna chain three. So one, two, three and then we're gonna double crochet six more times into the same space. So let's count those together. So we got one, two, three, four, 
five, six, and that's what we have. So the chain three is to start, it counts as one. So let's count those. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So you had one chain three and six double crochets which gives you a total of seven. So then once you get that seven done, you come to the next chain two space right here and you just put in another seven double crochets. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Please do that same thing going all the way around for all the chain two spaces that you'll run into. So as we finish up round number four, you got your last seven in here and we're just going to join to the top of the first chain three that you had started with over here. So what we're gonna do is that we're gonna fasten off this yarn now and just uh, just stop it here from going any further and what we're going to do is we're gonna bring back our cream color that we used in the center and we're going to continue then on to round number five. But before we begin, just weave in your ends here and then we're going to begin on uh, the diagram for round number five to see what we're up to for that. So in round number five, we're going to start off with the new yarn here and we're going to start off with the cream color that we have right in the very beginning and all we're just going to do is that we're gonna start off in the first chain three and put in a single crochet. So chain up one, single crochet in and then single crochet in each one of the double crochets across and then this one that is extending down, this is called an extend or uh, uh, a long single crochet that you see here and what we're going to do is that we're going to come all the way down and we're gonna come into this around here and just put it together and then we continue to single crochet and then the next one we come down in between. So let's begin round number five using a fresh color. So let's begin doing round number five. So we're going to start off with a slip knot if you would like to do it my way and then what we're gonna have is that you can choose any one of the seven double crochets uh, rounds that you go. Just make sure it's the first one of any one of the seven. So it can be there, there as long as it's the first one and we're going to just go into the first one and attach it with a slip stitch. And I want you to lay down the straggler down on top of the row, of the row as you go. So we're gonna chain up one first and then coming back into the same one, I want you to single crochet into that first single crochet or double crochet that we had and then we're just gonna a single crochet into each one of the single or double crochets that we go across. Sorry about that. And we're just gonna continue along. I'm not really counting, I'm just actually looking for all the stitch work as I go. And if you are counting, there's only seven stitches here. And you come into the last one and then you're about to jump. But you can't jump yet. You need, to, you need to do that long single crochet. So what we have to do is that instead of just going into a gapping space, we're gonna jump down two. So go not into this space but into this one here and just go around it. See, I'm just going right in. Do you see that? So just right into the space. Grab it from behind and pull through and then just give it some extra um, yarn like so and then just finish it off like that. Okay, so it's an extend, it's a long single crochet. So then start in the first uh, double crochet that you come into and keep on going. So just single crochet all the way until you get to the next one like the, the next one that you're gonna run into. And I'll show that to you one more time. Okay, so we're about to jump to the next one but we gotta do that long single crochet. So just looking at the space, so one and two, just jump down, come from and pull it from behind, give it a little bit of slack and then finish it off and then continue. So please do that all the way around for round number five. So as you come all the way back around in round number five, you're coming into the last double crochet but you know what? You still have to do your extended uh, or your long single crochet down. So just come on down and finish that up and then you're going to slip stitch it to the beginning single crochet to finish off with. And then th what we're doing is with this particular color we are done and then we're going to move on to the next color for round number six and we'll bring back the diagram. So cut this off, weave in your ends and let's uh, start on number six together. So before we begin any further, you're going to have a question and I know you are because I have the same question. So you're gonna notice that this white looks like it's raised up. It is raised up. 
and you're thinking to yourself you're about to move on and it's not raised up. This is a layer of surface crochet that it's done at the end of today's clue. So even though we're about to move on it's still gonna look flat until we come and what's gonna happen here in the instructions is that you can see that you have circle edging and the last round we just did in round number five with the white we're gonna do the circle edging around that particular stitch as that we go. So let's move on to round number six. Let's zoom in see what we're up to. So let's move on to round number six. So we're gonna change the color here and I'm gonna have my solid blue that I'm gonna about to use and I use that in my swatch and we're gonna begin right in the section where there is a, a long single crochet down and then we're going to then just a matter of just working our way across. You can see that there's single crochets in a row here okay and then we're gonna go to a half double crochet, two doubles and then we're gonna do a treble chain three and a treble into the same one and then we continue all the way around. So you're gonna notice that it's just a matter of getting it like single crochets and then it gets bigger and bigger to form a square and then it comes narrow as we get closer to the round of the edge. So what's gonna happen here is that when we go to start off we're gonna chain two and that will count as a half double crochet as you go because you can see here in this middle section there's a half double crochet each time that you go all the way around. So let's uh, bring up our new color and let's attach it to the top of the long single crochet and let's begin to do that round. So let's begin our new color and I'm just gonna create a slip knot to begin and we're going to attach at the top of any one of the long single crochets. It doesn't matter which one you choose. It'll all be equal in the end. So you're going to just attach it with the slip stitch and I want you to chain two and that counts as a half double crochet when you go to do this particular round. So the next four are going to be single crochets. So each one of these single crochets you're just going to make them a single crochet in the blue. Lay down the blue on top of the line so that you can bury that underneath. So let's count those out together. So we got one and two three and four. So now what we're going to do is that we're gonna get slightly bigger. So the next one will be a half double crochet. The next one will be, the next two actually will be a double crochet. So it makes those double crochets. So one and two and then finally the next one and you'll notice that it is the long single crochet just so that you have a reference point is going to be a treble. So wrap that hook twice going into that stitch and I want you to treble and then chain three. So one, two, three and then treble back into the same one. Now I'm gonna take you through a complete row as we do it right now or it's a, com a sorry a complete side. So let's begin the next side. So moving to the next stitch there's gonna be two doubles in a row. So two double crochets. So one and two. The next one will be a half double crochet. And then the next four will be single crochets. So one, two, three and four. And you'll notice that the next one is an extend or a long single crochet. So we're gonna half double crochet there. Why do you think that we're half double crocheting in the middle of a, uh, of a side? That's because these are sunk in a little bit, right? So it's making up for the space for that. So next, the next four are going to be singles. So one, two, three and four. So your four single crochets have now been put in the next one is gonna be a half double by itself. The next two will be a double crochet each. And then the next one is going to be in the long single crochet. You see it here. So this one is going to be a treble. Chain three and treble back into the same one. And you, you can just reverse this video at this particular point just to review on what one whole side looks like as you go all the way across. But at this point it should be turning into a square as you get all the way around. So please do that for the remaining and I'll meet you at the end of this uh, round in order to make sure you get the right conclusion. So we've just come up almost all the way around and I just did my treble, my chain three treble into the same one and now we're just gonna finish up. So the first two are just gonna each be a double crochet. So one and I got two and then the next one is a half 
and then finally the next and final four should all be one single crochet each. So one, two, three, and four and then all you're just gonna do then is just join it to the top of the chain two that you had started with just like that and that concludes that round. So do not fasten off at this point and what we're gonna do is bring back the diagram one more time for round number seven for the conclusion of today's mystery for week number one. So finally as we come around for the final clue that we have for week number one is number seven. So we're gonna just start up right where we are and we're gonna chain up one and one single crochet into each one of the stitches and then in the corners of the chain threes you're gonna be two single crochets, chain two, two single crochets and then just single crochet along all stitches until you get to the next chain three space. So two single crochets, chain two and two single crochets. So we're gonna, gonna do this for round number seven. We're not quite done though. We still have the circle edging that will need to be done after this round. So let's begin round number seven. You're gonna chain up one and right where you are, just right where you did the join, you're just gonna do a single crochet in and then you're just gonna do one single crochet in each stitch going all the way to the to the corner. So you've been pretty con uh, conscious of your counting as you go. So I don't think you really need to count it. You can just uh, trust in yourself if you want to. You can if you would like to count it. Just count it on the diagram and you're gonna go right to the first chain three space. So the chain three space is gonna be two single crochets and then chain two and then two single crochets into the same space. That allows you to turn that corner nicely and then just turn your work and then just work your way down the side of just one single crochet in each until you get to the next chain three space and then that's chain, that's sorry, that's single crochet twice, two chains and two single crochets. So please do that concept all the way around. I'll see you at the end of this round. So I'm coming up all the way back around. I wanna make sure and you should need to make sure as well that you don't add in any extra stitches. Normally when you chain up one and you single crochet sometimes it looks like that there's two stitches left but there's actually only one and you wanna make sure you go into the last one here and then join it. So it looks like this is part of uh, an empty stitch but it's not. If you look carefully this stitch here already has something. So you're just going to join it to the top of the first single crochet. And then you're gonna fasten off this yarn and you're gonna weave in your ends and then that's it for the growth of this particular project for the right now but what we're gonna do is that we're gonna do some surface crochet first and then we're gonna do that and then we're gonna leave you then for week number two as we continue our mystery. So just weave in your ends and just leave it aside and then we're gonna just do some surface crochet using the original white that we had started with. Let's uh, come right back and I'll show you how to do that. So let's do some surface overlay. So what we're gonna do is leave an extra long tail and I want you to come back to round number five. So round number five is when we did the single crochets pretty much all the way around with this extended drop down as you see. What we're gonna do is that we're gonna play within the post. So let me just grab a pencil here. So we're just gonna go around the post on round number five in order to pop it through one side and the other in order to make it work. So let's begin. We can choose any one, it doesn't matter but I'd just be strategic about it and just go around the post. So just going around, okay. So just going in one side and out the other and then just slip stitch it just to join it and then chain up one and then one single crochet around the same one just for consistency. So you've left an extra long tail so you can use a darning needle to get rid of that extra one, extra yarn later. So you're just gonna move around and then you're just gonna come to the very next stitch that's available to you and then you're just going to just go around the post itself. The nice thing about this particular concept is that you don't have to worry about any stitches to count. You just have to look and get each one as you go. So just one side and in into the other. So it takes a little bit of getting used to I have to say. So this I thought was done at the time but it's actually done as a surface overlay and we're gonna go all the way around, around the post as you see. So let's see at the end of this round and this is the edging circle as we go around. So I'm just making my way all the way back around and I'm just gonna slip stitch into the first single crochet that I started with and I'm going to leave an extra long tail here as well. So what I want to do is that I want to use my darning needle and hide that in so that it brings balance to this whole thing and you'll just pull everything nice and tight and we're going to use a darning needle and then hide things out. So let me just show you what it looks like from a distance.
So here's what it looks like from a distance. I really thought that I was wondering if I was gonna have a buckle problem but once you just work your way through the stitch work you'll notice that it sits nice and flat for you. So what I'm gonna do is that I want to get rid of my tail ends for this white yarn that we have. So I left an extra long tail for myself and all I'm just going to do is that I'm going to feed it through a darning needle and I wanna drag that yarn to the back side of the project. So just dive in through the white section right down through it and right to the back and pull through. Okay and when I pull through I wanna make sure it looks good on the front and I want to weave it into this white section three times. So just go back and forth in the white. Don't go to the front side of the project. So if you see the needle jumping to the front side you know you're too deep. So just keep it to the side and just go one and then just go back in the other direction for two and go back in the other direction for three. And I wanna do that especially on these ones here because there's no other place really to hide them. You don't want them popping out the front because it's just surface overlay. So there's nothing real else to grab onto it because it's surface. So all you're just gonna do then is you take the one that you had started with. Again, same concept. Just feed it onto the darning needle. Dive it into the project. Right to the back side. And again, what are you gonna do? You're just gonna go and stay on the, the white section. So I have extra tails that I need to deal with. So at the end of today's project what you're gonna wanna do is deal with all your tails and get them done over with so that when you come back for week number two that you're all fresh and ready to go. So this will be the second time I'm diving in and then go back a third time. So third time's a charm. It doesn't fall out on you then and then you're good to go so you can cut that right down. So as long as your tails are all woven in and they're not gonna fall out on you, see how I've been going right up over top, just give them a little tug as you go and then you can just safely just come back because if I know I trust myself, I can just safely just cut them all now and you can cut as you go if you wish. Just turn it and make sure you don't miss any and then I might as well do the last one over here and then it's good to go then for mystery clue week two. So do you think you know what this afghan's gonna look like now? Mm, not so sure are ya? So you have to join me next week as we continue our mystery. You did some surface crochet today. Proud of you. We're gonna be doing it again next week but just don't tell anybody I told you that. So we're gonna see you next week. We'll continue the mystery. We'll see you on the events page. Please post your work in progress here on Joanne as well as the crochet crowd and we want to see your creativity. Don't forget our hashtags of handmade with Joanne as well as the crochet crowd. We'll see you next week and happy hooking.